This morning, last week, we started a new series called God is Not Dead. And if you were here last week, you got to hear a personal testimony of my mother-in-law and how she had cancer and how God has completely healed her of that cancer and she no longer has that. And the doctors even are amazed and don't understand and profess that she is a living miracle. And so this morning, we've got another special guest with us. And so if you will, help me make welcome this morning, Brother Buck Dillard from New Life Baptist Church. Yeah, um, spent a lot of time in hospitals. 
Um, I have like hospitals to this day. You know, I go and visit folk and you know, we, we pray and then I hurry up and get out. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, I, um, it was it was frightening for me. You have to imagine as a kid. It was very frightening from the age of uh, all the way up to about 13, 14. About teenage, right around in there, I can remember a change. And uh, all I know is that prayer could have bought it, you know, everybody just praying for me and, and, and me wanting to do what all the other kids did so bad, the will, if you will. Um, it, it, it started to change the condition. So around 13 or 14, you began to get, I'll say, faith, yeah. real faith, yeah. in what your mom and dad had in prayer. And so what happened in that? Well, um, I don't know. I've always been the kind of kid that I need to know how things work. <laughs> um, yeah, skeptic, um, inquisitive. I was always tearing up my mom's stuff to see like the clocks, I want to see what made that thing go around. Um, um, I remember sticking a key in the socket and have that's my oh. hair. Give me that bro. I was like, okay, what's in this thing that makes this go? And I was like, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> um, I was that I was that boy. I was that I was that kid. I'm the only the firstborn of of uh, five. I have four sisters. Lord have you. And I'm a boy, so I was I was all boy. Um, but listen to my father preach. Listen to my grandmother preach. My mother pray. My auntie pray. I was like, this got to be something behind who they keep talking to. And I I know God, but I, I didn't know God and Jesus Christ, and, you know, and had accepted Him my Savior and um, the head of my life. And that's when I started to wake up and, and realize that it's something that's bigger and at the time it was all about being on the outside of me because that's all you hear you know you pray to a God that's in heaven where is heaven there is above hell is below so you look to the hills which come to your help or the mountain uh, you know and it just it, I started reading I started meditating and I started trying to you know find God for myself who is this Jesus? You know, who is God? And if he's capable of doing all these things in the Bible, how come I can't play an instrument? How come I can't run and play football and, and basketball? And, you know, outside at the time, we didn't have a whole lot of game systems. I'm not going to tell you my age, but I just did. Um, you know, running around with a tire, right? <laughs> that ought to tell you something. We made up our own games, yeah. Uh, other kids would be outside and playing, and I had to be inside looking out the window. And uh, it was really, really, it was really bad. It was a very trying time. Uh, you can imagine um, the depression I went through, and it just did something to my whole mental state. And I saw over and over again in the scripture where it says that you can do all things. Amen. All things. Amen. And I'm like, okay. All things means everything you put your mind to, if you will to do it, there's a way it will be done. You have to have that kind of faith. So I grasped that type of faith, and um, it's been a blessing ever since. I've, I've just been blessed beyond blessings ever yeah. since. When you grasp that, do you still suffer from asthma today? I do not have any medication. I'm not on an inhaler. I'm not taking any shots. And for the last, I want to say, at least 30 years, I, I've been in that state. All the glory to God. All the glory to God. Um, and, and, and it just happened. It was like one year, you, I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm you know, taking a shot at the inhaler, and can't breathe. And, you know. But you know what? I... I I hear, I heard him speak, and he's like, it was like a whisper. It was like, you know what? Uh, Eighty percent of what we believe we can't do is only in our minds, right? And then I started to do a little more research, and I see people that are 17, 80 years old, and they're still running and 
you know, you let somebody say hallelujah, and they take off, right. and they're not even out of breath. Yeah. You know, they're they're competing in, in sports, and they're in great shape. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> There's a God somewhere. Amen. You know, um, but I have not had any difficulties. Um, moving back here to the Carolinas from Philadelphia, again, my body had to adjust. We were talking about it earlier. There are more trees here. In, in the south and southeast. Um, we don't have that many. We have the small up north, but the uh, pollution, but uh, my body adjusted. I deal with some sinus issues, but that was from birth. But nothing stops me. Amen. Amen. Nothing Amen. stops me. I continue to keep you know striving and, and, and doing the will of God. And that is ministry through music. Yes. About the same time I I, I, I stayed I called faith. Um, I went out for football, and my mom was really, really worried. In my mind, I was like, why are you worried when you keep telling me I can do all things? <laughs> what is wrong with you, you people? <laughs> you know, and I told my dad the same thing. You know, I can do this. Right. And uh, I played football four years. Amen. Four years. <laughs> you know, and... Uh, Start. I went out, tried out. It was never a doubt. I had a lot of speed. Um, I'm not a distance runner, but I have a lot of speed. I'm quick off the off the charts. I did that. I played. Uh, I ran track. I I had been playing the trombone since six years of age, and sometime my dad's church. But I can remember sitting in the back of the church while the music was playing and the bands were playing, and I was crying. I weeped. I weeped, and I weep like a baby. Because I wanted to play so bad. Um, you can still hear it in my soul. Um, but I couldn't. I just didn't have to win. Even after the shots and, you know, the uh, abuse all, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And uh, one day I just, I, it's almost as if I pushed it out. It's almost as if I continued to try to play that instrument during the off season of allergies and whatnot to the point my lungs strengthened. And I got more and more faith, more and more belief that I was being healed. Amen. And I do it for a living now. I've been doing it for the last at least 25, 30 years. I've been doing it for a living. God is good. God is so good. I just the opportunity to come and do this with you because um, I do this even at my shows. I have my own band. I have my own production. I have my independent artists, uh, solo artists. I have my independent I have an independent record label. Um, he's pushed not being able to place in the back of the church all the way to that level of success. So no matter what platform or stage I'm on, I use and I give God the glory. Amen. And people hear that because after the show, they'll come up and they'll thank me for acknowledging that God is all. Amen. So I had to flood that. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, uh, I don't know about a lot of people, but there's a lot of people that are skeptics as well, probably in our congregation, and say, well, that's good, that, I hear that. But how about you show us what God has enabled you to do? Would y'all like to hear something? Yeah. <laughs> now, this is a song I bought a specific track. Because of this topic, God is not dead. And if the track fell in line with the belief system that brought me out of bondage, so to speak. Um, the title of a song that says, I go to the rock, my salvation.